Hi guys, welcome to Saruj Beach in Muscat, Oman. We're looking at a beautiful baobab specimen. This is a planted species, or specimen rather. It's probably a few hundred years old, uh, for all we know. They can get up to about four or five thousand years old, according to the experts. Really difficult to uh, determine exactly how old these trees are because they do not have growth rings in the sense that other trees would have because about 40% of the bark is actually water or the inside of the tree is water and so they don't have the traditional growth rings that one is accustomed to. Uh, the baobabs are very 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 soft wood and um, it's typical of all the members of the family as well a very very soft wood. In fact balsa wood, Acroma logopus, was once uh, part of the family as well on partly because of the soft wood that it has. There are other species of baobabs around the world there are seven species in Madagascar, which has the most diverse baobab population, and then two in Africa, and um, individual species in Australia, Asia, and South America. The tallest of the baobab family, the family being Bomacasey, the tallest specimen, or species rather, is um, a 70 meter high tree, which uh, you, you find in South America. So, um, what's interesting about the baobabs is firstly they are, as they grow up, they change quite dramatically. A young baobab tree has simple leaves and then as time progresses uh, the leaves actually become digitately palmate, which is characteristic or typical of this tree. So, baobab flowers are really large, they're white and they open only at night time and are pollinated by blats. When, once they are pollinated, they obviously produce uh, fruits, and the fruits are large pod-like fruits. They're probably about this large, and they're filled with what is known as crematart. It's a chalky kind of substance which has a very, very sour or tart taste, and uh, has a very, very high vitamin C content. You can make a brew. The local people in Africa make a, a beer or brew out of it. The roots of this tree also have a high water content and are actually used to make a porridge. It's ground up and used to make a porridge. The bark is very stringy, which is characteristic of members of this family as well, and is used to make cordage. Uh, so all kinds of ropes and strings and things that might be used by people to uh, tie poles on their huts or on their boats or whatever. Uh, so a very, very interesting tree. The tree is, in this part of the world, actually only found really in the wild in one fairly large grove uh, in Salala, in the, in the Dofar Governorate. Otherwise, it's really unknown and there, are, there is speculation that it's either an isolated population that survived the drying out of the region or, in fact, it is a planted grove. This specimen here is, of course, a planted tree species. and. Um, you can see, unfortunately, there's been a lot of damage to the tree because of people writing their graffiti on the tree. Okay, so here we have a compound leaf, a digitately palmate leaf, which is typical of the baobab tree. So very characteristic. And remember I told you the young baobab trees have only a simple leaf and then becomes a compound leaf with age. So quite an interesting leaf. Okay, so the, an interesting thing about the baobab, I was talking earlier about the different species that belong to the family. The family has gone through a number of changes because of uh, new genetic research. It used to be part of the family Bombacaceae and included species like the Kapok tree, Ceba uh, pentandra, uh, and Bombax ceba is another species, and of course the um, balsa wood, Acroma logopus. But all of those species now have been placed into subfamilies uh, within the family Malvasi, which is the hibiscus family. So it's all been changed in recent times because of new genetic information. And um, now the, the trees, the baobabs themselves, belong solely to one genus, Adansonia, and there are nine species, two in Africa and seven in Madagascar, as mentioned previously. Uh, the balsa wood is very interesting. It's been used for flotation, many, uh, many groups of people. Baobabs also, because they easily hollow out, have been used for containers for storing water, um, but also, interestingly enough, as um, gel cells, as uh, rooms or 
or little huts for people to sleep in. Um, the only problem is with bat guano, uh, there is a danger of damaging your, your lungs, getting an infection. So the baobab is actually quite a sacred tree for many communities because it provides so much food and cordage and other uses. Um, it's also provided shelter for people. It can be hollowed out, what has been hollowed out naturally to form shelters and it's often a reservoir for water. Uh, the bushmen find the tree sacred because the appearance, it looks like if you look at it, most baobab trees, they are kind of like upside down trees. The roots appear to be on the crown and it looks like it's upside down. In fact, there's a, a Bushman sort of myth or legend that the creator, when he created these trees, he threw them down and they were top heavy and they landed on their tops. And of course, the, the roots were left exposed and hence the appearance of the tree. There is one tree called the Mogongo nut, which looks quite similar to the Baobab in Southern Africa, which might be confused with it. But otherwise, it's quite a distinctive tree and um, very, very easy to identify when you're walking through any region where the baobabs occur. In Madagascar, they are quite tall trees, um, typically reaching roughly eight, nine meters in height, sometimes higher, uh, depending on the, on the area and the species. The tallest tree of the, the family, as I mentioned before, is uh, 70 meters tall, that's Ceba pentandra. And I believe that's in South America. Otherwise, most baobabs are fairly tall, um, but they tend to be large in girth, and, and that's very characteristic of them. When the baobabs die after thousands of years, they kind of just fall apart into a bundle of fibers. Uh, so there's no wood really in the sense that most other trees would produce wood. They'd collapse, you know, fall over, for example, an old oak. Uh, these trees just kind of collapse into a bundle of fibers. Uh, because of their soft wood. And they are now placed in the Malvasi, which is the hibiscus family, which has very, very soft wood, uh, which is typical for the, the family. In fact, a lot of the fire-making woods that people use for friction fires come from the hibiscus family. So the baobabs are really amazing trees, and they are long-lived, and they definitely take a long time to mature. And they're quite vulnerable when they're young. Uh, elephants, for example, will do a lot of damage to baobab trees, particularly when they're young. And so they need to be protected. Around the world, they need to be protected. They are threatened virtually everywhere by human activity, by uh, animal activity, by mismanagement of parks. But they are magnificent trees and very, very interesting trees and uh, something that's worth preserving. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little bit about the baobab tree. It's a very, very interesting tree. It's an ancient tree and it deserves our protection. Uh, if you like the content of this video and if you enjoy and well, if you'd like to see some more content like this, please like and subscribe and um, leave a comment. Uh, it would be nice to get some feedback from you. Thank you.